Well, welcome back to Nash Crypto for another video. I've been asked by some of my followers if I could do a quick, kind of like a tiny crash course in how to trade with basics. Um, I'm not a financial advisor though. Please do further research before you invest your money. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. If it's financial advice you're looking for, please seek a financial advisor. This is just educational purposes only. I've got opportunities out there for you to have a look at. It's really down to you what you do with those opportunities or not. Obviously, I'm not talking about any projects today. I'm just gonna go through um, how I trade, what I've learned about trading. I'm not an expert. I've only been doing this for just over a year now when it comes to shorting, long in these kind of trades, indicates, etc. But it seemed to work for me 75% of the time. I do believe I am getting better, but I am no expert. If you want to join my VIP Telegram group where I put in what trades I'm doing, you can find out how to join by contacting me in my Telegram chat group, link in the description below. Um, I do have a copy trade account if you don't want to wait for me to put those in my VIP. Or you could take this information away with you free of charge um, to if you want to um, try to dabble in it yourself. Here goes. Uh, don't forget to smash the like button if you like the fact that I'm going to try and do this for you. All right, let's have a look at the first part about this. Here is the Bitcoin chart. I've cleared it, I've cleared it of uh, most of the indicators, that, or most of the drawings that I had on here. I believe it's clean, it's clean. Okay, so here you go. Here is your Bitcoin chart. This is on the daily charts to give you more of an idea. It looks like gobbledygook to you. It's like zigzags, boom, 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 boom. Yes, it is. But the charts could tell you a thousand words. So, in essence, let's try and go back a few years. In essence, you can see the chart is going to tell you, I've already said, haven't I, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand words. Let's go back to this area here. Right, now, you can have a look at this as a trader and think, right, well, how did anyone see as it was coming down here? That it's likely to start its move all the way up here well in in honesty you don't because if you look at the candles they're not particularly clear about which way they want to go they're not let's be honest it doesn't really tell you much does it but as you move along here these candles here that they've got wicks on either side wick on either side wick on either side hammer wick upwards which normally would suggest that there's going to be upward momentum now, these candles are probably the best indicator of an upward move or a downward move, depending on which direction it's heading. Because even though the hammer move has happened here, you still see a movement upwards, but it's also come back down again. And it's, re it's got to come up again, and it's sideways, not sure which way. It has a slight hammer here, showing downwards but it's not as strong so the wick here is a hell of a lot longer than this wick so it's not a strong one so i wouldn't take that as an indicator it's about to go back down again and you've got this one it tried to move up is being rejected wicks either side there's a sort of a, a kind of a hammer one here but it's red it didn't quite make the hammer but it's still another indicator that prices are bouncing around this area here and it doesn't want to go any further down. The wicks of candles gives you a huge indicator of market direction. Right, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's get that back in. Now the next one here is not really sure which way it wants to go. It's really, really tiny. These are called doji candles and I'm sure which direction they want to go. Here's your full green coming afterwards. Yes, it's a retrace, full green. Full green looking in that direction. Uh, got rejected a little bit. Not really sure. A lot more, but still not sure. Still not sure. It's not sure. It's not sure. Not sure. Not sure again. And there's a full green candle here. Now, if you go back to this date here on the daily, that's the 7th of, of September, these candles do give you an indication, especially with the wicks underneath, uh, behind it, does give an indication that market is more likely to start moving upwards. Now, how long it took to get to that point, is that 7th of September, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
Oh, you've got another one here. 2, 1, 2, 2, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Really, it took 31 days for that to actually play out on a daily. So the one thing about candles is that candles can give you an idea of market direction and the biggest indicators are these hammer matter hammer ones. The dojis are wicks on either side, they're just unsure which direction they want to go and you can see that in the way that it moves a bit more sideways when you have four wicks either side. If we look along here, wicks either side, not sure, a bit more direction, but wicked above, uh, below, moving upwards, not really sure. Um, of market direction and as you go a little bit further ahead you can see it had quite a massive run so if you were savvy to these kind of candles you would have probably put a trade in here so right this looks like it's finally going to make some moves here's your indicator and then look at what happens afterwards I'm not saying this is going to happen every time you see one of those hammer direction candles um, but it is definitely an indicator of market direction. As you can see, it went on a bit of a, a bender, you could say. Good old, um, this was the move into 2021. Now, understanding candles on how they work is very, very important for a trader. Because as you sort of get to the top of the, um, the run, you kind of see a not so sure candle wicks either side it's coming down there's another wick underneath so really it's kind of showing you that this move hasn't quite finished yet as you can see it had another run up all these wicks underneath and an engulf uh, kind of what to call a fuller candle here but take it back up here and then it's not sure which way it's going yeah it's got a hammer down the bottom but it's a weak one it hasn't got a bigger body and there's a following one straight afterwards i mean if you look at these hammer candles you're not going to think well i'll take the trade right there and then you don't have to take it right there and then you say right this is saying it's probably going to go down but the, but the candle before the day before it wasn't entirely sure here it's saying it's going to move up upwards but then it comes back down again and then you get that full body candle so that's when you know like here you've got the full body candle 30, 31 days later that's when you know that price is going to move upwards. So you've got to look out for full <coughs> body candles, give you more of a better indication. Okay, Let's give you sort of an idea of looking at charts and sort of trying to read which direction they are heading. So as we go here, we're now in April 2021. I have a full green candle up here, um, but it's got an either way candle, an either way candle kind of a stronger red candle with a wick underneath I'm not sure if it's still going to come down next candle showing a wick above that's where you start to get a bit of a red flag that's what we would call I would call it this will be your red flag here because as you can see next candle is a full body red yes it wicked underneath but look what it's done next to it it's got what looks like a doji candle here but then followed by a full red candle and then another one either way after that. And yes, it's wicked here, it's wicked here, it's wicked here. Full green body candle. So you know the move hasn't quite, it's not quite over yet. It's not quite going to dump yet. So looking out for those kind of, um, looking out for those kind of uh, candles is really, really important. If you get the full body candles where you're more likely to either take the trade or keep the trade you've already got running. Because had you traded from back there on that, that nice uh, full body candle, you're more likely to continue, it's more likely to continue, so you'll keep that trade running. And then you see a little one here, not quite sure, a little bit of a re uh, pull back, another full green candle. An unsure candle, a bit more of a redder candle, hammer candle, but it's green, but following downwards. And then you get a full engulfing candle, and then another one back up again. So you've got to take your time, you've got to keep watching these candles, which direction they're going, not sure, not sure. A bit full of green, which says it's probably likely to continue upwards. Wait for the next candle. It's got a hammer red upwards. 
remember it has to be green and then you've got your eyes away a bit more of a full bodied red candle a tiny little green candle it's not quite making it back up and then there's your full red candle coming down it's unsure this is when you know this is when i would take the trade on here this gives you a hundred percent more full idea this market is about to drop and look that's exactly what it did right here it dropped and then there's your short trade and you could apply the same principles uh, looking at this wicks here wicks underneath it seems to have made its move it's got a nice green candle here red candle an unsure candle red sucked up candle so wicks nice long wicks underneath a full body candle um if i was a trader i'd be looking at this before we look at all of this and i'd be thinking i'm going to take my trade here and i'm going to start to go i'd long this trade why because then it looks like it's going to go that's what i would probably put a bit of a long in but then you've got this unsure, unsure green, unsure red. Yes, I'll be down a little bit. But look at all these wicks underneath. <laughs> Moves back up again. Break even. Starts to come down. And there's a red hammer. But it's taken, taken over by another full body candle. If you don't want to do it here, if you wanted to wait for more confirmation, then you just wait a few more days and there's your confirmation. It's going to go up. If you zoom out, you may have had a slight pullback wicks underneath here might have come down below you but this indicator is very powerful so is this even though it's gone up you just wait and then and then there you go it pulls back again you've got to watch those wicks do you understand see where i'm coming from i hope you hope you kind of see where i am coming from i hope you understand what i'm saying right so what else comes along with this let's move on now let's come back to to now right so if you're anything like me you're probably looking at this going this is exactly what bitcoin done back then yes it was pretty much uh come across sideways on its way down boom and then back up again do you think this is going to make its way up let's have a look at the candles and see what they're telling us so you've got this drop here this is your full body candle another full body candle still not sure which way it's going I put, if I was watching this properly for Basin, I probably would have taken my trade on this one and shorted. And then followed it all the way down. That's what I probably would have done. Got either way candle here. Red, either way, either way. Lots of wicks underneath. This kind of tells you that there's quite a decent support area here. And people are buying this up. And then you have this little green candle here. This little sort of um, indicator here. And there's your full body green candle. Now, even though this is red hammer, I probably wouldn't have taken a trade here. I probably still would have waited to see what would happen. And looking at this, it's not really sure which direction it's going to go. And then this is kind of one of those candles that's created out of the news. It probably wouldn't have happened had the news had not come yesterday. So when it comes to news, it's a very hard one to trade. But if you are watching a chart, you see that a full body candle is coming here, then you're more likely, I would indicate, I would um, put a trade in. And I did put a trade in around here on a long, um, and I, I closed it. Didn't keep it for very long. Um, and then you've got your wick up here. It's run out of steam. And you kind of see what's happening next. As you can see so far on today's daily candle, it's quite a full red. We need to see where that stops. Is it going to form one of these? Is it going to form a hammer upwards to show there's going to be more upward uh, uh, trajectory? Or is it going to go a little bit further down and create more of a candle? If it does, then the likelihood is it's going to come down. It's all about probabilities and that's sort of how you've got to look at it. So that's a bit of an idea on candles. I think I took one up here on candlestick patterns. Here we go. Right, let's scroll down. How to read candlestick patterns. This is a very good um, tool on Investopedia. I will copy and paste this onto the um, in, uh, 
uh, video description below. I'll get the words up just to help you if you want to go and have a look at it for yourself. So daily candlestick represents a market's opening, high, low, and closing, as we know. And as you can see here, high price, open price, close price, low, low price, same sort of thing. So examples of, uh, as I was talking to you about the doji, and they call it the spinning top. So doji, plural, is also doji, okay. It's a candlestick formation where the open and close are identical or nearly so. A spinning top is very similar to a doji, but with a very small body, in which the open and close are nearly identical. Does that make sense? So this here is saying a technical perfect doji, the cross, uh, suggests the corrective rebound may be ending. There you go. It gives a bit, bit more of information. After several days of further indecisive indecision, shown by spinning tops, as I was talking to you about, the down move resumes. So it's not sure, because all the wicks are above here, it's not sure, that makes sense, doesn't it? Even if it's green here, the downward movement uh, continues. A bearish long legged doji uh, suggests yet another topping pattern, which is this one here. I guess hopefully I explained that when I was going through it all. Right, bullish and engulfing lines. An engulfing line is a strong indicator of a directional change. A bearish engulfing line is a reversal pattern after an uptrend. The key is that the second candle's body engulfs the prior day's body in the opposite direction. This suggests that in the case of an uptrend, the buyers had a brief attempt higher, but finished the day well below the close of the prior candle. This suggests that the uptrend is stalling and has begun to reverse lower. Also note that the prior two day's candles, which showed a double top or a tweezers top, itself a reversal pattern so a bullish engulfing line is the corally corollary pattern to a bearish engulfing line and it appears after a downtrend also a double bottom or tweezers bottom is the corollary formation that suggests a downward trend may be ending and set to reverse higher so it's pretty much looking at all these wicks looking at the body of the candles like i said and there's your reversal does that make any sense right the hammer like these are your hammer candles, as it's explained below. Suggests that a down move is ending, hammering out, out a bottom. Uh, note that the long, uh, the long lower tail, which indicates the sellers made another attempt, but lower, attempt lower, but were rebuffed and the price erased most or all of the losses on the day. The important interpretation is that this is the first time buyers have surfaced in strength in the current uh, down move which is suggestive of a change in directional sentiment, the pattern's confirmed by a bullish candle the next day. Does that make sense? So here's your candle here. I guess even if it's red, it still says the same thing. Okay, fair enough, I like that. But I would mostly, personally, would look for more green. But there we go. I've kind of seen that example already in the, in the, um, in it before, because it could be seen as a hanging man. See? That's why I don't like it. Uh, to be red so it could also be a hanging man I guess a hanging man looks like like has no wicks above it so that probably makes a slight difference it means it's gonna be a downward reversal hopefully that makes sense the gaps you won't see on crypto unless you're looking at CME so take note of long tails and small bodies. Uh, candlesticks with a small body, a doji, for example, indicate that the buyer sellers fought to a draw, which is what we, which is what I've said to you. The card goes either way, leaving a close nearly exactly at the open. Such a candlestick could also have a very small body, effectively forming a spinning top. Candlesticks, relatively, you could trade on candlesticks alone, but you need other indicators to go with it. So I'm going to show you the five indicators that I like to use on my charts. Let's go back to, why is this going a bit, a bit slow? Uh, it's a bit, a bit slow, apologies, right. So indicator number one is the most important indicator you could ever use and that is your trend lines. So you can either line it up from close to close or wick to wick. Now, I like to do wicks. Why? Because I get a better idea of where it's bouncing off. So here's the top of this run up until April 14th. And it's touched it again here, which shows it's, it shows it's definitely going to continue its downward momentum. Touched it again here on the third go. 
And the fourth go is broke through. Now, it's very common that it can on a fourth attempt break through a trend line, but it can also continue to go down. Now, this was a massive breakout. You normally wait for a retest, and that's when you have to look at the lower time frames. If you're going to use um, trend lines alone, because the one thing you have to remember, the trend is your friend until it ends. So this is showing a downward momentum. So you would probably continue to sell. As you can see, your eyes away effect here, your full bodied red candle, it's still not sure where it's going, and then it's a dump down. Had a full engulfing candle pretty much back up, and then it got rejected again. This is a hard one to uh, long and short. <clears throat> um, but this is an indicator that shows you we're still going down. So even though it's come up here, it hasn't quite made it back to the trend line. So personally, this is where I would put a short in. And I probably would have made the right decision. And I would have kept that short running, even though it come down and come up to here. Come down to here, come up to here, I'd still be in profit. Yeah, so even if I put my short here, didn't catch it completely. comes down to here. I'd, I'd be in profit along these lines here. So whether or not you take those trades or get into those trades, but I wouldn't do it down the bottom, not with these kind of wicks here. It gives an idea that we're quite, that we might be reversing, but it really does depend on the next candles. But it's come back up again and retest the trend line. And it's being rejected. And it's come up here, it's broken through. Now normally you'd wait for a retest of the trend line before you make a decision because it could deviate and come back down underneath, which can happen. And it has happened before. Give you an idea of a change in direction. Here's your direction straight down. There's your it's touching points. Here's your movement above. Pretty much typical, typical close at retest here. And up it goes. You could trade that, but it's a very, very difficult trade to do when you're not very well experienced and watching the charts for Baton. So your trend line can tell you a lot of things. You can have another trend line here if you want. There's your wicks, boom, boom, boom. Still showing down with momentum. Didn't quite hit it here. It might come back up and hit it here at some point. But trend lines are very, very good to use. Probably one of the best indicators you can use, and it's the number one indicator that I do like to use. So it gives me an idea of market direction. I have uh, number two is, do, 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 is volume. And volume is a very important indicator, and that indicator is down here. This tells you how much volume has occurred in these buying and, and selling. So as you can see, big green volume candle, half a green volume candle here, and another push the next day, push this up. Volume gives you an idea of how much buying or selling pressure there is on that, on that, uh, on that day. You're using the daily candles, of course. Uh, the daily chart, obviously you could go back to hourly chart, four hourly chart, eight hour chart, 12 hour chart, weekly chart, and this will be an indicator for that week or, day, or uh, the eight hours or, or whatever. This tells you it's been huge volume coming in. It started off here, it overtook the red one before the selling pressure. That is a good sign volume it's a very good sign because if it's showing that it's going higher than the selling pressure was before then you're likely to have a decent move as you can see reflecting the candles above you and reflects it here and here although there's massive volume and sell pressure here it's caused an either way candle it hasn't overtaken the green if it's overtaken your green uh, volume before then it's likely to uh, follow that and drop down as you can see here the green was up a little bit here started to overtake as you can see from the candles above massive red volume bang there we go so this is your second indicator is looking at how much volume is in this trade today on the daily chart or during those eight hours or hour or whatever it might be okay so the fourth uh, indicator that I really do love to use is your Fibonacci retracement. So you go from the top of the move and you 
you come to here, follow it down to here. At the moment, you've got a hit here into the 618 move. Now, this, now the 618 and the 786, as you can see here, these are what are known as your golden zone. The one means it's a complete move back to where it started. The five is the halfway mark of that move from top to bottom. Now, for me, if it bounces off the five, it means it's continuation. If it hits the golden zone and sort of wicks around the 618, it's probably going to continue going down. If it gets to the 786 at any point, which you can see it hasn't, then it's more likely to reverse, in my opinion. That's how the Fibonacci works. Now, for me, if it's hit the 618 Fibonacci, then I move it down to where it hit the 618 Fibonacci and then continue following the move. And again, it's um, hit it you see the Fibonacci is red. It's definitely done it here. So I put my Fibonacci back here. It's definitely going to do it here. So I put my Fibonacci there. And as you go along, you'll see it hasn't hit it. it hasn't hit it. it. Hasn't hit it. it. Hasn't hit it. But it has hit it here. So I'll bring it down to here. So 618 is what I look for. Remember that. Down to here. It's just hit it here. So I'll put it back down to here again. If you notice that, it always retraces back to that golden zone. That's why I love this golden zone. Massive indicator. Okay. So, like I said, as you can see, it always retraces into the 618 golden zone, which means that that shows that it might be a continuation down. But it's gone all the way up to here and hit the 786. I wait at the 786. Is it going to make it through the 786 and retrace all the way back? Then you know if it's retraced all the way back, it's probably it's a reversal. It's probably likely to con to go past that. So this Fibonacci retracement is a very important indicator. It shows you so much about a move. Right, let's use it here on this run from the bottom. As you can see, it hasn't hit. It hasn't hit. It hasn't hit it. It's gone up there. Still hasn't hit it. Not the golden zone anyway, but it has hit the five a halfway mark and it had bounced off of that halfway mark see what i'm saying if it bounced off the halfway mark and doesn't go into the 618 or near the 786 then it's a bounce it's likely to continue upwards which is what it's done it did that bearing in mind this was etf uh, spot etf uh blackhawk etf uh, application news also can be a catalyst went up see there you have it. There is your Fibonacci retracement. And it still retraced and bounced off the halfway mark and bounced back up again. Again, that bounce was due to news. But if you look at these indicators, you can go back as far as you want, have a little play with them. You, sh you can show stuff that it, that it can show that it always retraces. If it goes all the way through it, past here, then it's a different story, isn't it? <clears throat> now the reason why I only use these parts if you put your Fibonacci and you're going to get all of these numbers I don't use all of these numbers excuse me why don't I use all of these numbers I mean I could use the 382 which I know that one uh, call trader does use but I don't use it because I want to see uh, more market direction and be 100% sure so when you go in you put your Fibonacci tracement on trading view you click on the settings tab and you uncheck all of these, keep the 1, the 618786, and the 0 0.5. And it gives you this nice little move here. So that's your other indicator, is your Fibonacci retracement indicator. So we could put that uh, here. Um, and you could do the whole move if you fancied it. Um, but like I said, I like, to, I like to show the move. I like to follow it down with my 6, 618 indicator. So let me, maybe if I just did that, it might help you a little bit more as your fib here starts about here. And it hits, just bounces off the 618 there, so I move it down and show you here. And then you can also take it from the bottom of the move, show it all the way up. It hasn't hit yet until it got to there. There you are.
nice 786 reversal. Boom. Does it make sense? I hope it does. Indicator number three. I'm not sure. <clears throat> That's fine. Alexa going off. I don't know if you heard that. That's indicator number three. Indicator number four, which is also a fantastic indicator, is your stock Castic RSI. Now, so Castic RSI is a great tool because as you can see, it kind of moves up, moves down, moves up, moves down with the chart. It gives you an indicator of where the move is heading towards, whether it's overbought or oversold. Now, if it's oversold, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go down here quite close to the zero, even minus zero. It could come quite close down to. And it can also show you momentum going up here and then momentum coming back down again. So back to the oversold. Momentum going back up again because I had a little bit of a candle here, didn't it? And top and tail over itself and then back down again. So this can give you also an idea of market um, direction as well and where it's sort of going in one way or the other. Now for me, the stochastic RSI is better viewed on the four hour, but it's also pretty good on the daily. So you have all these indicators. You've got indicator one, your trend line. Uh, indicator two, your volume. Indicator three, your Fibonacci retracement. Indicator four, the stochastic RSI. Okay. And then the fifth one, last but not least, shapes. What shapes are you seeing on here? Now, there's a number of different kind of uh, chart shapes that you can find on um, in a chart. As recently, I shared head and shoulders patterns on Casper. Oh my God, I did a lot of these, didn't I? Casper, and um, let's go back to that trend line out. Come on. I don't know how to clear this particular trend line. Get in there, right, okay. Um, on Casper, I found a head and shoulders pattern. Very, very good way of indicate of an indication of direction head and shoulders. You also have cup and handles as well. Cup and handle um, shapes as well. Let's go through that quickly on Investopedia. I'll also uh, put this in uh, uh, in the in the uh, 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 description below. Can't talk. Okay. So uh, introduction stop chart patterns and these are very very good right let's go down pennant always always spell this wrong i've also used this as well if you've if you in my vip telegram group have seen when i'm putting in my trades i'm showing you charts as well there's some charting where i think it's most likely to go um this indicator shapes is just amazing i love the shapes i think the shapes are the fifth icing on the cake. So a bullish pendant is a pattern that indicates an upward trending price. The flagpole is on the left of the pendant. So here's your flagpole here. There's your pendant here. Does that make sense? That's a bullish, um, that's a bullish pendant. Now if it breaks out of that, as you can see here, it sort of goes in, it sort of squeezes there. And it's, it's off to the races. Okay. And then here you kind of say this is a bullish, this is also a bull flag. So we've got a pole here. Off to the races. And then it gets rejected, which can happen. So that's to sort of like break out, continue that. If it doesn't, you've got to stop it basically. Okay, so here we are. Pennants are continuation patterns drawn with two trend lines that eventually converge. The key a key characteristic of pennants is that the trend lines move in two directions. Um, one will be a downtrend line and the other an uptrend line. The figure below shows an example of a pennant. Often the volume will decrease during the formation of the pennant, followed by an increase when the price eventually breaks out. A bullish pennant is a pattern that indicates an upward trending price. The flagpole is on the left of the pennant, as you can see. A bearish pennant is a pattern that indicates a downward trend in prices. In the bearish pa uh, pattern, volume is falling and flagpole forms on the right, uh, on the right side of the pennant. It would be nice to see a picture of that, wouldn't it? Flags. I like flags as well. Here's your flags or continuation patterns constructed using two parallel trend lines that can slope up, down or sideways horizontal. Generally, a flag with an upward slope bullish appears as a pause in a downtrending market. 
A flag with a downward bias bearish shows a break, uh, a break during an uptrending market. Typically, the flag's formation is accompanied by a declining volume, which recovers as price breaks out of the flag formation. So here you are. Here's your pole. Here's your flag. Here's your breakout. That's what it's trying to say. Note how the price continues in the direction of the original trend once the price breaks out of the flag. And you can also, if you turn it upside down, you can also get a um, bearish flag. I love pennants. I love flags. They're the easiest ones to find. These are your wedges as well. Pretty much the same as your pennant. Uh, continuation patterns similar to pennants in that they are drawn in two convergent trend lines. However, a wedge is characterised by the fact that both trend lines are moving in the same direction, either up or down. It's the same direction. Go into that area there. There's a bit here. There's a bit of a gap there. I don't really use wedges. I like pennants. I like flags. Ascending triangle. It's a continuation pattern marking a trend with a specific entry point, profit and target, and stop loss level. The resistance line intersects the breakout line pointing out the entry point. Um, the ascending triangle is a bullish trading pattern. It's all well and good, but it broke down. <laughs> it can still happen. There's your ascending pattern. Uh, it's triangles. There's just your descending. It's opposite of ascending triangle. Indicating the demand is decreasing and descending up a trend line suggests a breakdown is likely to occur. Does that make sense? Symmetrical triangles, you can go into all of them all the time. Cup and handle. So like I said, I like pennants. I like flags. Cup and handles. And I love head and shoulders are the easiest ones to uh, read. So cup and hand is a bullish continuation pattern where an upward trend has paused but will continue when the pattern is formed, the cup. Portion of the pattern should be a U shape that resembles the rounding of a bowl rather than a V shape with equal highs on both sides of the cup. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, the handle forms on the right side of the cup in the form of a short pullback that resembles a flag or a pennant chart pattern. Once the handle is complete, the stock may break out to new highs and resume its trend higher. See? There's your handle. Does that make sense? Head and shoulders. Oh, my favourites, I have to admit. Head and shoulders is a reversal pattern that can appear at market tops or bottoms as a series of three pushes. An initial peak or trough, followed by a second and larger one, and then a third push that mimics the first. Now, I used this with Casper trade recently, and it uh, it gave me a nice little short. Obviously, the news yesterday reversed that, but luckily my stop loss was moved into 50% guaranteed return. An uptrend interrupted by a head and shoulders top pattern may experience a trend reversal, resulting in a downtrend. Conversely, a downward trend that results head and shoulders bottom or an inverse head and shoulders will likely experience a trend reversal to the upside. So you turn it upside down. Horizontal or slightly sloped trend lines can be drawn connecting the peaks and troughs between the head and the shoulders. As shown in figure below, volume may decline as the pattern develops and spring back once the price breaks above, in the case head and shoulders bottom or below, in the case of a head and shoulders top. So there's shoulder, head, shoulder, Boom. As long as it breaks the, uh, the neckline and stays under that neckline or above the neckline, then you know the, the head and shoulders has been validated. If it doesn't, then the head and shoulders has become invalidated, which means it's not going to play out. You can also get uh, double tops. You can watch out for those. Double bottoms, the same kind of thing. Gaps, which is mostly you see in the CME charts. You probably see that on the normal um, crypto charts. So, I mean, I will show this for you. I mean, have a look at that. Um, let's show you an example of a uh, pennant. Let's show you an example of a pennant. Just so I know I like pennants. Let's go back to the BTC. Right, let's find a nice pennant. You could say this here could be a pennant. Let's, let's see. So, here. There. So, there's your pennant. And it broke out. This is a bullish pennant because it's up here. It broke out. There's your pennant. And there's your continuation. Does that make sense? That's why I like it. Because it looks good. 
I like it. it looks good. There's your pennant. So that gives you an idea of the bullish pennant and direction is likely to go. Now, <clears throat> flags. Um, this should have been a ball flag. Now, if you look at this, it was a ball flag. It did break out, but it came straight back down. It got rejected. So that actually can happen on ball flags. Um, so they don't always, always uh, work out. You could say this is a ball flag too. Or you could say this is a long ball flag here. Yes, you could. You could say this is a ball flag. Boom. Here's your line. Flag. Boom. See what I'm saying? Sort of things you sort of look out for. Now here I shared recently that I believed this to be a bearish flag. So here you go. Here's your here's your bear flag. There is your pole. Trend line, see that. There's your pole. This is a ball. This is a bear flag. Yeah, this is a bear flag. But. It went against it, it broke out of the bear flag because of the news. So that can happen. But this is an example of what a bear flag does. Let's try and find other examples of bear flags. We go back to last year, bear flags worked absolutely incredibly. Incredibly. So I'll show you a better example. Uh, so here you can say, right, this is your pole and this is your, your flag formation, bear flag down. Yeah. Come down here. You could say this is another, uh, bear flag. Boom down. There's another bear flag. And it's an ascending one. So you've got your upward momentum. But if it's a, an ascending one, it's not always going to work out, is it? It's like it tried to explain to you before. Here's another bear flag. Boom. So does that make sense? It's a 75% probability. Remember that. It's a probability of market direction of where it's likely to go it's not a guaranteed indicator it doesn't mean that it's guaranteed it's going to happen but you gotta look at your volume you gotta look at your trend lines so if you draw a trend line from here you could say this is your trend line boom it broke above your trend line so your trend line will tell you something slightly different if it bounced off the trend line then you're looking at a drop do you see how the indicators are starting to come together See your top and tail, not sure which way to go, hammer down, boom, yeah? See how the indicators are working out now. Now you can see them coming, unfolding in front of your eyes. This is a bear flag, but it's starting to ascend in an upward channel. There's your downward trend line, it's broke through. It's broke through, so it's, it's invalidated this uh, bear flag. But look what happens afterwards. It's an ascending, but it it rejected so you've got you could say a double 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 top here triple top maybe it didn't keep that did it so really this bare flag even though it broke out of it it still played a part later on down the line quite a long distance but it got there in the end so it's all this sideways momentum and it's not breaking above. It's just not getting past these levels. Does that make sense to you now? See what I'm seeing? Hopefully you see what I'm seeing. Right, let's see if I can get an idea of a... I mean, a perfect um, cup and handle that I found was... Well, actually, if you look at um, Bitcoin here, it did form a cup and handle. There's your cup. And there's your handle boom rejoined it and off it went does that make sense beautiful that's a nice, that's a good idea for cup and handle situation remember that 
who went absolutely crazy from January this year. Give you an idea of that sort of cut and handle. Now, as you look through, you can try to identify head and shoulders patterns. It's quite difficult here with Bitcoin because um, I don't think I did find a head and shoulders pattern on here um, on the uh, Bitcoin chart. Um, this wouldn't be. Um, but I did have a head and shoulders pattern and that was on Casper. So let me show you Casper on the watch list so I can show you the head and shoulders that I identified. That could have gone either way. Here you go, there's your, there's your head and shoulders pattern. This is the perfect head and shoulders pattern with all the indicators in place. You got your trend line, broke it, your head and shoulders, your left shoulder, your head. This is just the, I drew this before, I drew this whilst it was here. So there was two chances of being bearish or bullish. It was bearish. The trend line gave it away, it broke that trend line. So, right, so it looks like the bearish pattern is going to unfold. I wish I short it here, but I waited for it to follow the um, head and shoulders pattern. And it did, and it broke the neckline. So if it breaks the neckline, and stays below it, then it's definitely going to go down. Now what they say is, it's likely to take the same move as on the top of the head to the neck, from where it breaks the um, neckline to the bottom. So really, Casper should be making its way down to here if this is completely validated. But you still get a nice decent short from it. So you see it's played out, it's played out here really. It's not quite decided to go all the way down. This is your candle indicators either way. Here's your red. So then you, you play it here. Why is it not? Okay. You play it here. You could have gone as far as there. 10x is 100% move. It could have gone, I gave that, I got it down here. So 50% move. And I'm out on a 10x leverage. That's quite high. You shouldn't really 10x unless you're a bit more, um, uh, what's the word? Um, experience. But then you have your indicators below. It's quite a small red volume. Obviously, this was the. Uh, news that came yesterday, it came off the back of, and your stochastic RSI is at the bottom, so it indicates it's probably going to be a reversal at some point, it's been oversold, and Casper's quite a strong, um, a strong currency, a strong project. Wicked perfectly off the 618 here, so I believe it's now going to go, continue its trajectory upwards, and probably form that bullish head and shoulders pattern that I believed it was going to form. In fact, you could say this is a shoulder, this is now going to be a head, and then boom, it will move. That's my belief. I hope that kind of opens your eyes a little bit more to trading, to kind of, you know, understand it a bit more. Hope that makes sense to you. Now, where is my play? This one. Hope that makes sense to you. So I've shown you the bull flags, bear flags, the cup and handles, how they work, the head and shoulders patterns. I've showed you how to use stochastic RSI indicators, trend lines, volume, how the candlesticks work, and also um, Fibonacci retracement. If you get out of those five, so remember, trend line, volume, stochastic RSI, Fibonacci, and I missed one. Start again. Trend line, volume, um, stochastic RSI. I've done the bonus that's RSI. Fibonacci retracement and shapes. That's it. Shapes. If you get at least three out of the five indicators going in the direction, then you've got your seventy-five percent probability it's likely to go in that direction. You can wait for the fourth indicator to play its part, just to be a bit more sure of your trade and that's how it works now news plays a massive factor it moves markets quicker and it can move it in the opposite direction depending on which way you were trading and that can happen quite often so black or etf move the market in the opposite, the opposite direction than you expect it to go excuse me and then you have the grayscale win in the sec move the Moved in the opposite direction to where it should have really gone. Because here's your bear flag. 
We should have gone down there, really, if you think about it. But it didn't because of the news. Here is my main charts here. Here we go. So it's broke out. This is a move it should really do, which was the same move that it done from top to bottom, top to bottom. So this is why I indicated it was most likely to be the long move and it should really make its way up here. It's a probability. Volume was massive yesterday. Volume is tiny today, which means that there's not really much buying or even selling. It's not that strong today. It's a, it's a stochastic RSI is on its way up still. It's still showing upward momentum. So this could reverse and continue upwards. Yes. Um, there's your Fibonacci retracement from this point. Um, let's just zoom out, move over to the lowest point here. So it still hasn't quite made it back to this area here. Now I should have the five in there. I don't know why it's not got the five. Stick the five in there. There's your five. You know, it could even bounce off here if you want to continue its downward momentum. If it does, you watch that line. This is your resistance zone. Finding resistance showing how many times it's tried to break out of there. And it has done. And it's become a resistance zone here. So resistance zones as well. That's a bit more for advanced advanced traders you get your head around a five indicators you start to look at resistance lines you start to look at cme gaps these are all very important things but you know the biggest thing is this is what it is now if you want to have an idea of why i went for the nvidia short let me show you why obviously it's not in profit at the moment it's been going up 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 and up and up and up it's going to start losing momentum so classic higher size at the top it's showing it's turning over. It could stay up there for a little bit longer, but it's going to turn over. It's hit the top here. It's hit the top here. There's your top, double top. It hasn't quite made it. It also had a higher high here, but it got rejected. It hasn't quite made it back to continue its movement upwards. The NVIDIA is a AI um, project, and it's, you know, it's done really well off the back of the AI chips, but there are going to be other competitors coming in. Other competitors coming in. Um, like... C limited. So I've decided this is this is at the bottom. I've I've decided to go for a long on this because this is a competitor. It's classic RSI is at the bottom. Volume was huge on selling here, but volume is is medium uh, small here. But I've gone for a long on here because I believe this could this could do better. Now I'm missing a chart off of this for some reason. So I had another one in here. Uh, okay, it's going to be on. Was this on the red list why has it not got onto here it should have done because i've i've added it on here um so maybe i'll have to do it again because it should just go straight on here so you've got this one and yeah this one and i'm also looking at coin the coin base on a stock exchange can give you a great indicator of how stocks are going on um, uh, uh, which direction stocks are going as well when it comes to uh, crypto and this is just a stock exchange there's your SQ um, see there's my long in play um, and C as well I've also put one on this because I thought it was a uh, block uh, but it wasn't but hey ho I saw it was at the bottom Stochastic I saw it at the bottom I thought you know what I'll give this a, I'll give this a rock I'll give this a go because look at that Fibonacci retracement is all the way up there and it always finds its way back unless this company is dead and this company is obviously not dead and there's also a gap here so it's another thing you look at gaps as well which close this is stock exchange trading it's a whole other ball game once you get your head around these these like, simple indicators how to read candles how to do these indicators shapes and flags and trend lines then you know you're more likely to find your way around it for the Fibonacci retracement, the stochastic RSI, the um, all sorts of things. I can put in lots of different. Um, it's recipe is a great place to go at. It gives you basic understanding of it all. Um, you can also buy books as well. There's a book by uh, this lady. It's very very good. I follow her on here. Um, let's see if I can go up on here i 
There we are, following this lady here. She's released books on um, on trading and stuff. She's great to follow on Twitter as well. I follow her. You can learn a lot. I recently purchased her books. I can recommend them. Um, they've had great recommendations and she's probably one of the biggest traders in stocks, Forex, etc. that you could ever meet. You can learn so much from her as well. Like I said, I've only been doing this for um, just over a year. I am no expert. But I'm learning how to read the charts and I'm starting to understand them a bit more now and which way they go and how important news is to change market direction just out of the blue. And that's where stop losses come into play. I'm a bit more of a gambler, so I don't do stop losses. I only put them in place when I'm in profit to guarantee that profit. I keep an eye on how much I'm losing and then I decide my risk management at that point. But it's down to you whether you do stop losses, etc., and stuff like that. I mean, once you've done your charting on here, let's go back to my BTC chart. Let's do this one. <clears throat> Which one? This one that I was using. As you go back to your BTC chart, you have a look and see right, what do I want to do? Where do I want to put a trade? You have a look where you know, where it's likely to go. So this is obviously broken out of a, a, a bear flag. You get your Fibonacci retracement. It's likely to retrace to here and bounce off if it's going to continue its downward momentum. Just likely to do because of the bear flag. If it goes up to here, it fully takes back out its, um, its pole. If it retraces through here, up to here, then it might actually reverse if it gets all the way up here. That's what you've got to watch. So if you took the long here, I took long, but I, I closed it. If you took the long here, which was, which was a long in, um, render, if you took the long here, then you've done pretty good profits if you keep an eye on this breakout. Even if you saw it breaking out, because I saw it breaking out around here. If you put that in, you could have made nearly a 50% move on a 10x. You could still be in profit by about 20%. It's not bad, uh, really. You just watch this, see where it goes, and just kind of like learning the candles. Well, take this step by step. It's nearly an hour on this video, so it's a long video trying to explain it. If there's anything you're unsure of, chat group, link in the description below. Contact me if you've liked my explanation and you have understood everything I've said. I'm kind of hoping you have. Uh, please smash the like button for me. <laughs> Subscribe, hit notification bell to do some things out. It can be quite time sensitive. Um, right, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Like I said, if there's anything else you want to know, any questions you have, contact me in my chat group or put a comment in below. Um, and if you want to join my VIP Telegram group, contact me in the chat group, link in the description below uh, to find out how to join and I will get you in there. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching. I hope I haven't bored you absolutely silly because these kind of videos don't really get as many viewers as uh, talking about the next project or the next big thing or what's going to happen next. I hope this has helped you in some way. Um, but yeah, I will leave it there. Thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye for now.